All right, so as long as you understand basic math and geometry, well, then you should be able to solve this problem, which is we're trying to find the area of this region right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the figures. So we have a circle, and inside of the circle, we have a triangle. Now, one thing about uh, this figure that the base of the triangle actually runs through the center of the circle. Now, of course, we have some additional information here as well, but what we're trying to do is calculate this area right there. All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then of course I'm gonna walk through step-by-step step how to solve this problem. This is not that difficult. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoyed this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, now I don't wanna explain this figure too much because I wanna give you a full opportunity to solve this problem all on your own. But uh, it may be hard to see, but this line right here or the base of the triangle runs through the center of the circle, which means this distance right here is the radius of the circle. Now, of course, this little perpendicular uh, symbol means that this is the height of the circle. So if this is three, well, this is three as well, and so is this. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer for the area of that region is approximately 2.565 units squared, or the exact area is nine pi minus 18, over four. All right, now, if you got this answer or something pretty close to this decimal right here, well, that indicates to me that you solved the problem. So congratulations, and for that, you definitely get a happy face and an A plus for your knowledge of basic geometry. Now, all you really need here to solve this problem is three things, okay? The first thing is you need to know how to find the area of a circle. The second thing is you need to know how to find the area of a triangle. And then the third thing is you need a strategy to put this all together to find this area right there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get into this right now. So again, here is our problem. And uh, as, as long as you know the formula for the area of a circle and the area of a triangle and you understand the figure, well then you should be able to reason through and calculate the area of this region right there. All right, so once again, this is the center of the circle. So we have this triangle inscribed in a uh, circle. Now, because this is the center, this is the radius, but this is the radius as well. So this right here is the diameter or the width of the circle. So really what's going on is that we're, all the action, if you will, in this problem is in a semicircle. Okay, so our attention is really right here. Okay, so we have a full circle, but we, uh, we're going to kind of just focus in on the semicircle. All right, so let me go ahead and give you the formulas to calculate the area of a circle and a triangle because the most interesting part of this problem, in my opinion, is the strategy to figure out the area. Okay, so the area of a circle is pi r squared, and the area of a triangle is one half base times height. All right, so those are the two formulas that we need to solve for this uh, uh, area right here. But again, what we need is a strategy. So how can we get to this area right there? Well, first of all, we're going to have to figure out the area of the semicircle, right? And to get the area of a semicircle, we're gonna have to calculate the area of the entire circle. So if I can get the area of an entire circle, well then I can get the area of a semicircle. Now let's suppose I have the area of this triangle, okay? And I have the area of the semicircle. Matter of fact, let me just go ahead and sketch it this way. So here is our, his, here is our semicircle, <laughs> excuse me. And then here is our triangle. Now if I cut out the area of this triangle from the semicircle, that leaves me with what? Well, it leaves me with this area right there this uh, these two regions but that's not what i want i want this one region right there okay so this is 
uh, going to be kind of the general approach that we're going to take to solve this problem. Now, I don't want to fully explain this too much right now because I want to kind of give you a chance to say, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I see how you're going to do this. And if you see how to solve the problem, well, maybe you should pause the video and actually go ahead and calculate the answer. All right, so again, the radius of the circle is 3. And uh, that means that this distance from here to here is 3. Now, because this is the center, okay, and we have the height of this triangle, this is the perpendicular distance on this uh, triangle right here. This is the height of this triangle. This is also 3 because this is a radius. This is a radius or radii, and here is a, another radii. Okay, so I'm pretty much setting you up uh, to solve this problem. I gave you the formulas. I kind of gave you kind of a general strategy. So if you're uh, really, you know, motivated, pause the video and see if you can calculate the right answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. And again, we're going to focus our attention on the semicircle. Okay, so here is our semicircle, which of course is one half of the circle. So we want to find the area of this region right there. Okay, so how are we going to approach this? Well, we're going to have to kind of do this step by step by step. So the first thing that we need to understand again is that we um, have the radius right here. Okay, this is the center. So if this is the radius, well, that means that this is three right here. This is the radius right there. And it also means that the height of this triangle is also the radius. Okay, so we're going to just go ahead and take this one step at a time. And we need to first calculate the area of the semicircle. And we can't do that until we calculate the area of the circle. So we're going to calculate the area of the circle, and then we're going to take the, uh, one half of that, and that'll give us the area of the semicircle. And then we'll go ahead and focus in on the triangle. But let's go ahead and do this right now. And uh, here, matter of fact, let's go ahead and just uh, look at the rest of the strategy. That's really, I guess, what I wanted to do. So here is our semicircle, right? So we're going to calculate the area of the semicircle, which means we first have to calculate the area of the circle. Then we'll divide that by two. We'll have this area. And then we're going to calculate the area of the triangle. Now, if we have the area of the triangle, and of course the triangle is within the semicircle, we subtract it away from the area of the semicircle, we're going to have these two areas right here, okay, what's highlighted in yellow. Now, of course, I'm only interested in this right there, but because uh, this distance is three and this is three, these areas, and this is three as well, these areas are the same. So once we get to this stage, all I need to do is take one half of um, this combined area right there, and I'll have this area, which of course is the answer. So when you're uh, looking at problems like this, you have to have a strategy. If you know the formulas, then really what you have to do is just take it one step at a time and follow your strategy. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the actual calculations right now. And the first thing that we're going to do, again, is calculate the area of the circle. But here, again, is uh, basically how we're going to get to the area of what's in question, the area of this region right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, before I get into all these fun calculations here, I got to stop this video and say, hey, I need your help uh, to continue to grow on YouTube. Now, I've been on YouTube for many years, and uh, matter of fact, I started my channel like 14 years ago, but I really didn't do too much in the beginning. I posted video here and there, but maybe about six, seven years ago, I really started putting much more effort into YouTube. And of course, the results kind of speak for itself. And that's the same thing when you're trying to learn math. If you're doing a little bit here and there, you know, your growth or your improvement is not going to be so great. But if you fully immerse yourself in the subject and you really work hard at it, you know, then you're going to kind of take off. So if you're kind of having a tough time with math, you know, the best thing to do is to kind of double down, right? Put more effort into it. But that means you want to find great, clear, and understandable math instruction, all right? So if you need additional help in geometry or mathematics, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And what we're talking about here is like, uh, you know, basic math, basic geometry. I teach this in my pre-algebra course and in my math skills rebuilder course and of course in my full geometry course. The links to all those courses will be in the description. But uh, I love doing these little YouTube videos to, you know, try to kind of review and uh, teach some of these basic concepts. 
All right, so make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest video. Uh, one last quick thing. Um, as some of you out there that are subscribers or follow me, thank you so much. I definitely appreciate it. You may have noticed that I've been doing about a video a day. And normally, um, I've done uh, two, sometimes three videos per day. But right now, I have some major projects going on. So I'm going to be doing at least one video per day because I just love posting on YouTube. But uh, in the future, I intend to uh, post more uh, uh, videos. And I try to cover basic math to advanced math like calculus and everything in between. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the actual number crunching here. So the first thing that we need to do is calculate the area of this circle. All right, so what's the uh, formula for the area of a circle? Well, the area of a circle is pi r squared, where r is the radius. Okay, so our radius here is 3. Okay, so we know that's what the radius of the circle is. So we have the formula. Area is equal to pi r squared. So we're simply going to plug in or replace this r with 3. So the area of this entire circle is going to be pi 3 squared. Okay, now here you got to be uh, very careful because uh, with the order of operations, you have to do powers first. We're, gonna, we're not going to multiply 3 times pi and then square that. We're going to take 3 squared, right? We're going to do powers before multiplication. So 3 squared is 3 times 3 is 9. So then we have 9 times pi. Okay, this is what we call the exact area of the circle, 9 pi. Now, uh, by the way, too, uh, one thing if you're dealing with units of measure, so if we had like uh, centimeters here, um, our answer would be centimeters squared. Okay, you have to pay attention to specific units of measure when it comes to area, distance, and volume. But uh, here we don't have any, uh, you know, units of measure, any specific units of measure. So our area of our circle is 9 pi units squared. But this is the exact area. And this is a word that comes up in a lot of math problems. So if you're asked to find, like, the exact area of a circle or the exact volume of a cylinder or sphere, anything that involves uh, pi, well, then just leave the pi like, uh, in other words, just leave it like this, okay, with the pi symbol. Now, what I could do is take this pi and use a decimal approximation of 3.14 and then take 9 times 3.14. Well, then I would get an approximation. But uh, for this stage of the problem, uh, 9 pi is perfectly fine. Okay, so that is the area of the entire circle, but we need to find the semicircle, so we have to take that uh, 9 pi, which again is the area of the entire circle, and take one half of it, right? So it's going to be one half times 9 pi. Now, of course, all of you out there are experts in fractions, so it's going to be one half times 9 pi or 9 pi over 2, right? So real basic fraction stuff here. So when you're multiplying fractions, you're going to multiply the respective numerators and denominators. All right, so here we have finally the area of our semicircle. Okay, so 9 pi over 2 is the area of our semicircle. So now we need to calculate the area of the triangle. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So here is the area of our semicircle, and we're just kind of thinking about the strategy, right? So we got the circle, the semicircle here. So if we can get the area of the semicircle, then we're going to end up with these little uh, sectors right there. Okay, so 3 is the radius, right? So we talked about that. There was a 3 there, and uh, the height is also 3. Okay, now you have two little triangles here. So you could calculate the area of this triangle to multiply it by 2 because this distance is also 3. But really, we can be kind of, uh, you know, smart about this and be like, well, if this is 3, okay, and this is 3, well, the entire base of this triangle is 6, and the height is 3. So we could just go ahead and uh, calculate the entire area of this big triangle. All right, so area is equal to 1 half base times height. Uh, again, the base is 6, and the height is 3. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so here is uh, the setup for that. Okay, so the base is 6, the height is 3. So area is equal to 1 half base times height, so 1 half 6 times 3. 6 times 3, of course, is 18. 1 half of that is 9, or 2 goes into 6. 3, 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, so we're almost there. So we have the area of the triangle and the area of the semicircle. 
So what does that mean? Well, if we could take away the area of this triangle from the area of the semicircle, that means that we have the area of these two regions right here, okay? Now remember, I don't want both of these regions. The problem calls for this right here, okay? But these are the same regions. In other words, the area is the same because this is three and this is three and this is three. These areas, whatever, or the combined area right here, if we just divide that by two, we'll get this area. Okay, in other words, this area and this area are the same because these triangles are the same. All right, so now all we have to do is uh, do this math right here, subtract away the area of the triangle from the area of the semicircle, and then we'll get the area of these two regions right there. So let's uh, go ahead and take the next step and do that calculation. All right, so nine pi over two is the area of the semicircle. Nine is the area of the triangle, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, express nine as a fraction. So we'll put that over one. So we can see here, this is two and this is one. So we need a lowest common denominator, which of course is two. So we're going to multiply nine over one times two and two, right? Okay, we'll multiply the numerator and denominator by two so we can have the LCD of two. So nine times two is 18. One times two is two. So now we have two fractions with the lowest common denominator. So nine pi over two minus 18 over two. So now we can go ahead and simply subtract the respective numerators. So nine pi minus 18 over two. All right, so at this point, we are almost there, but you can't get lost in the calculations. You have to always, you know, ask yourself, all right, what did I just, what did we just calculate, right? So this area is the area of these two regions, right? It's the area of these two highlighted regions. I don't want that, I want one half of this. So we're not uh, quite done yet. And again, this isn't difficult. Maybe the difficult pro part of this problem is managing the work, right? Managing the strategy. All right, so nine pi minus 18 over two is the area of these two regions. I only want one half of this area, which would give me the uh, area of this region right there. So one half of nine pi minus 18 over two is what? Well, all we have to do is simply just multiply one half times nine pi minus 18 over two. So again, we're gonna multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So we're gonna end up with nine pi minus 18 over four. All right, so this, the, this is the exact answer. Okay, this is the exact area. And we could, you know, again, uh, take an, a decimal approximation for pi, and we'll just use a rough approximation, 3.14, and plug it in for this pi right here. So that would be what? Well, nine times 3.14, again, a rough approximation, minus 18 over four. If we do all this number crunching, we're gonna get a decimal approximately 2.565. Okay, so this type of problem is definitely going to be a common type of problem that you will face in geometry. But the, the main idea here is that you can actually calculate the area of all different types of regions as long as you have the formulas for basic shapes, things like circles, triangles, uh, squares, and rectangles, etc., etc. So as long as you know the formula for these basic shapes, well, then you can kind of use these shapes by subtracting one or maybe adding one to another to calculate the area for a specific uh, region. All right, so hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And remember, if you need help with basic math or geometry, check out the links to my full main math courses in the description. But uh, anyways, with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.